The course regulatory law of petroleum operations is a fundamental course for anyone who's involved in the oil and gas industry in any aspect of petroleum operations. The most important thing is that as petroleum is being extracted, that you and the environment are safe, particularly you. So this course is really about how to keep petroleum operations from uh, harming people and harming the environment. So what we look at is all these different aspects of petroleum operations and how the law regulates it. Interestingly, there's many things that are exactly the same, whether you're in Nigeria or the North Sea or Australia. And that's the beauty of this. It's the global nature of regulation. One of the fundamental underpinnings when we're regulating petroleum operations is how the law is structured and what that does in terms of, of regulating. So for example, if you look at Deepwater Horizon, which occurred in the Gulf of Mexico, that was under a system we, we call, which we call prescriptive regulation. And that is the regulator tells the operator what to do, when and how. Now, under that system, we of course had the world's biggest oil spill. Compare that to some of the regulatory frameworks of things like the North Sea, uh, which both the Norwegian and the UK system is more objective based, where you have an objective not to spill oil, and then it's up to the individual companies as to how they're going to fulfil that objective. And it's this difference in regulatory style that is at the heart of regulating petroleum operations, and it's something, these principles, that we explore in great depth using not just theory, but also looking at many practical examples. And one of those practical examples that we look at is Piper Alpha, which of course occurred off the coast of Aberdeen here in 1988. Now, one of the big issues about Piper Alpha is that it marked the end of the use of prescriptive regulation and ushered in an era of objective-based regulation. And it's these two different systems which form the fundamental basis of these course. And that's really important for anyone in petroleum worldwide to understand. Aberdeen has always been at the heart of regulation and regulatory change. Aberdeen itself is called the oil capital of Europe, but probably most importantly, Aberdeen was the place where 167 people lost their lives and marked the change in the regulation of health, safety and environment. And that has also had an impact on the people who work here. So those that are teaching you are the ones that have got experience in this regulation. We hold very dear and very close to our heart the fact that 167 men were killed and that we work and strive both in our professional lives and in teaching you about learning how we can regulate better to keep people safe when extracting petroleum. We start with regulatory theory in the course, but then we build very quickly onto theory and principles of health and safety regulation, and we study that for a number of weeks. We then look at the environment aspect of health, safety and environment, and that's including things like preventing harm and what we do when harm occurs, but also who's liable and how does compensation occur. We round out the course with some real world examples and we study several incidents that have occurred, in particular Deepwater Horizon and also the Piper Alpha. And what that does is it gives you a fundamental understanding of how we apply the theory and what we can learn from those practical accidents or incidents that have occurred. By undertaking this course, you'll be learning not just about the North Sea system, which you might be learning in your workplace, or you could be learning about the prescriptive system, but we'll actually give you a thorough grounding in both of the systems of regulation. And that gives you the capacity to work anywhere in the world, in any jurisdiction. Throughout this course, we will be building upon the knowledge so we start with regulatory theory and then we build towards specific areas, whether it's environment or whether it's health and safety. Along the way, there are some little gateways in order for you to make sure that you understand each of the uh, areas and the assessment will include real life examples and asking you to make comments on what you would do in real life examples. And the idea of this is to be able to apply your learning to the real world.